So everyone should have this. Ladies and gents, this is kind of like part three of what we've done so far. Everyone should have this written down. And if not, then it will be a little bit trickier, but, or not trickier, but it will make kind of the rest of this. Before you write anything down, I do want to change one thing for you, which is what we're going to do for every part of the assignment. Because I, I'm letting you, or I encourage you guys to have that note card, where you have like the B, the H, the A, X, the Y, and the C. Instead of matching up the letters that they gave, I'm just going to have you write down what the letters are on that same sheet. So that way it doesn't get confusing. Okay? So like on this side over here, we're going to solve for the B. This is my value for X. This is my value for Y. This one right here is the H, and then this one up here is the A, with the total length between them being the C value. So again, try to stick with the same letters that we have on that note card that you guys already have, just to make the rest of this a whole lot less confusing. All right, so starting off, I've got the same shape. Okay, it's got the three triangles in it. It's going to look very similar to this. What I did up here is I just gave all the spots. So I'm just going to kind of put the numbers down that we already know. So currently, do we know what X is? Yes. What is it? Six. Perfect. Do we know what Y is? No. Yes. 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 24. We don't know A. We don't know B. Do we know what C is? Yes. Yes. What is it, Brady? 30. 30. Yes. 30. Or Brady found that one out. We took X plus Y, so these two lengths, is that full length for, the for, for C, which is 30. And then we also don't know what the H is. Okay, so we've got the X, we've got the Y, we've got the C. From there, we can look at each one of those equations that you have on your sheet of paper, on your note card, in your book, however you want to look at it. For this first one, I'm going to start off with this top equation. Okay, I'm going to change my, the color of my pen just so I'm kind of staying consistent that way and not getting it all combined with each other. So the formula I'm going to use to start with is going to be that x over h equals h over the y. So I'm going to use this very first equation, and I'm going to plug the information I do know, which is from over here, into that equation. <coughs> so looking at that, I know that my value for x is going to be 6. I don't know h, so I'm still just going to put it over h, equals h over, and I know the value of y, which is 24. Okay, so I've got it set up, 6 over h equals h over 24. I can do the cross multiplication to start to solve this. Okay, h times h is going to be h squared. And then 6 times 24 equals 144. Because I have a perfect square, these are those geometric means we started on Monday. Because remember when we started geometric means, where I just had the two numbers multiplied together and then the square root? Yeah. Okay. So if I have h squared equals 144, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So my value for h is going to equal 12. Okay, that formula's been used up, we're done. Now we're on to this next one. It's saying C over B equals B over X. I'm going to make sure that I get a different color. So the numbers I get to put in there, my value for C 
was the whole length. So C equaled that 30 right up here too. So it's going to be 30 over the B because I don't know what B is yet equals B over my value for X is six. Okay, B times B is B squared. 30 times six is going to be 180. To get the B all by itself, I'm gonna square root both sides. And I am left with B equals, I should have these memorized by now, 13.4. I got 13.4 for that number. And my very last one that I'll do, let choose a different color again. I'll zoom out just a smidge. I'm going to use this formula right down here, so this one's done. I'm going to use C over A equals A over Y. So C is still 30. So 30 over A, which we don't know yet, equals A over Y. My value for Y is 24. A times A is? A squared. Yep, 24 times 30 is going to be 720. Is that what you said, 24 times 30? Okay. Equals 720. I want to get A all by itself. It can't be squared, so I'm going to square root both of these. So square root my a squared, square root for that one, I get a equals 26.8. Okay, if you want to leave them on the bottom and just kind of circle them this way, so there's my h value, there's my b value, there's my a value, I'm perfectly happy with that. If you want to write them back into the triangle, I'm good with that too. Okay, so you can go through if you'd like to do that. You can say this value is going to be 12. This one was going to be 13.4. And then this value up here was 26.8. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. The one thing I do want you to notice that I want you to take your time to verify is this number here, 13.4, is uh, between these two numbers is the smaller one, right? It makes sense that it should be in this spot. 26 is the bigger of the two. It makes sense that it should be in this spot here. There's going to be, I'm letting you know, when you guys work on this, a lot of times people will mix up some of those numbers for their A and B. Just make sure that these ones, the way they look, are going to make sense. Yeah. This is the smaller triangle. It should have the smaller number. Yeah. This is the bigger triangle. This should have the bigger number. Yeah. Okay? Do this. All right. This next one, I'm going to have you guys help me with it. Whoops. You already know one of them. My bad. There's no Nothing. Okay, then. All right. So I'm going to start off. Let me just erase these things and get. Again, ignore this stuff. We're going to use the different letters just so it's consistent. So this one over here, we'll say this is going to be our Y value. This one will be our X value. This one will be called H. This one will be called our X value. And this one over here will be our, oops, I, this shouldn't be an X. I'm backwards. Uh, y is over A. And this one should be the B. Yep, 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 yep. With the total length, that wasn't a straight line, but you get the idea. This one's going to be our C value all the way up there. So ignore all that stuff up here.
is good. All right, let me get a different color. Let's start off with what we know. I'll put it on the board just so that way we know it. Do we know what the x value is? Yes, it's an 8. Do we know what the y value is? Perfect. Do we know A? No. Do we know B? Do we know C? Yes. What is it? Perfect, and we don't know why. Nice. Um, so we don't know that one, so we can start to solve it. Let's start with our very first equation. Okay, somebody help me out. What will I put in for my very first equation? Jack, what do you got? A over H equals H over 2 pi. Okay. It worked. I knew exactly what you were saying. So I got 8 over H equals H over 25. Yeah. Perfect. Now we get to go through and we get to do cross multiplication. For those people who just want to make a little reminder, cross multiplication, these ones go together. And then these ones go together. So Jack, sorry, you already used up your turn to talk. Because you, know, you, you know what you're doing at this point. What am I doing next? Carter? H squared equals 200. Okay, Carter, you used up your turn to talk. What do I do next? Delaney? Square root, of. Square root of both sides. So that is left with H equals the square root of 200 is 14.1. So I'm going to write it on here. H is 14.1. It's on my board, I'm, or I'm, it's on my sheet, I'm happy with it. Okay. All right, let me get a different color pen. Somebody else, talk me through the next one. Those people who already answered don't get to do it anymore. Yeah, you guys already solved H, you did perfect. Go ahead. Uh, 33 over D, D over A, and then cross Okay, so. I thought E was 13.9. That was on a different problem. No. Sorry. Um, it's over eight. Yep. That was. I think that was from the last problem. But for Jack, that last one, we had eight squared equal to square root of two hundred. We took the square root of two hundred, and that's where we got the fourteen. Okay. Okay, so Lily talked me through how I'm going to set it up, and she said I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to stick with what she said. Uh, somebody new. When you cross multiply, what do you get? Guys, you can do this. I, I, the thing is, I know you guys know how to do it. I want to make sure everybody's on there because the next one will be on your own. Liam? So you did B squared equaled 8 times 33, okay, which is 264. You square rooted both sides. So Liam kind of cheated and went straight ahead to the answer. You okay? No. I'm not, I'm not concerned. I just want to make sure everybody sees how we're getting these steps. Because again, nothing is going to change between these three prop or three sets of problems we're going to do together. So I want to make sure everyone understands the steps that we're doing. So then we got 16.2 for that one. So my B value is 16.2. My very last one. Let me get a different color pen. Somebody new, you guys got this. I believe in you. Perfect. So we took, again, this formula here, C over A equals A over Y. So 33 over A equals A over 25. Okay, I'm going to do cross products. What do I get for that? Um, you get A 
325. Yes, so you took 33 times 25, and you got 825. Perfect. And we're square root both sides. Fantastic. And I'm left with A equaling the 0.5 power. Yep, 28.7. Fantastic. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down where you're feeling. Okay, it will use every one of these equations. Okay, again, make sure you plug in the letters for those equations. Do this one. I'm going to have you guys do this one on your own. I want to see that you can do it. Let me change these things. That way I get the right, right letters for you. So if this one will be my X value, this will be my Y value. This is my H over my X. This will be my B value over here. This same way that you've done it before. We're still going to use the same formulas, but you're just going to plug in the numbers you know. So again, we I'll, I'll do this one with you right now. Do we know X? Do we know Y? Yeah. We know that's nine. Do we know A? No. no. Do we know B? No. Do we know C? No. Do we know H? Yeah. So if I know the Y and the H, I can do this one because I know the Y and the H. Could you do the Pythagorean theorem? Technically, yes. We're going to stick with this one. But yes, you could do the Pythagorean theorem to figure this stuff out. It's, it's the way I Okay. But yes, you can do that one. We're going to spend a day on it as well. I just want to show you how you can do these proportional ones because there's going to be some variables that we'll eventually throw into the mix. All right, show me what you can do, guys. No, we're going to do the exact same order. So it'll still be x over h um, with h over y. It'll be the exact same order. It's just that now instead of plugging something in for the x value, you don't know that yet. So you'll plug something in for the h value twice. What's that? Use the one that you have two of the letters. It's like I have the Y and the H. I have both of these. It doesn't have to be. I just need to find the one that has two of those letters. So like this is the only one that has two of those letters. So I'm going to use this, this formula here. So the 12 would go on top and then the Y. So if I put it on like this. Nope. So I don't know what X is, right? So you're just going to put an X on top. I know, but how do, we, how, do we do, how do we do the type of problem where we don't have CB or X? You will know. You'll solve for X first. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be able to use that number for oh. the next one. Yep. <sighs> It should be even. Yes. But these are both H, right? So it should be a 12 up here, too. Oh, you put them on both? Yes, because they're both the same as letter. <laughs> Yep. So it's x times nine. So perfect. That's how you do. Perfect. And now we want to get x all by itself. Yes. Just nine. Yep. Thank you. 
you just put 16 corrects. Well, 16 now, 16 now, you can salt or seeds, and you can use that. Or 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 you can use so it's only five? Yep. That's for the series. And then you can use both those bottom equations. Though. Give every number that you need to solve the last two. You don't, but do you have the X? Yep. 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 Perfect. And then, yeah, that one's done. Right, you find the A. And you follow the There you go. Yep, got them. Yes. I need to find the you got it. I got it. I got it. I Perfect. All right. I'm going to go over the, the answers real quick, and then you guys have the rest of the time to work on, on that one. So when you solved it, again, I'm going to show the first one, and after that, I think you guys have it down. But you should have had X, which you did not know, over your H value is 12, equals 12, over your Y value, which was 9. I multiply these ones together. I get 9X equals 144. Divided by 9 for both sides, x equaled 16. Once you go through, you have your x equaling 16. You can add up, you can get your c. That's going to equal 25. Your a value, that one should have been 15 when you did your square root when you got done. Your c value, or sorry, your b value, that one should have been, what was that one? 20? Is that right? Yeah, that one should have been 20, I believe. Any questions, comments, concerns? You guys are on it then. I'm not going to do the, the last problem or story problems right now. I'm letting you know. Page 542. I want you to do 20 and 22. You guys have two problems. Put those on the back are the other half of your assignment, and that's all I need for tomorrow. Okay? Let me stop recording the lesson and I will save it on to classroom.